Blazing Chrome is a run and gun game looking to evoke memories of some of the genre classics. It certainly caught the eye during our most recent upcoming games video, but is it worth a place in your Switch collection? Well I'm Glenn for Switch Up, thank you to the developers for the review copy, and now let's find out. The story of Blazing Chrome is straight out of a Terminator movie. Set in the future of 21XX, a machine uprising has seen most of the human population wiped out. Small pockets of resistance remain as they battle against the not so affectionately known Toasters. You choose from either one of the human resistance or a machine that's been reprogrammed to fight for the resistance, again giving some major Terminator 2 vibes. As with all run and guns, the basic premise is that you need to shoot your way to the end of each stage, fighting a few boss characters along the way and avoiding being hit at all costs as it's one hit deaths just like the classics of old. To circumvent this, you have a number of lives to aid you, the amount of which depends on the difficulty level you choose and you also have infinite continues. Power-ups are also obtainable throughout the levels from crates that appear at certain points and there are two types available. Firstly, there are weapon upgrades, changing your standard auto-fire machine gun to more powerful substitutes such as the wave beam, the pulse rifle or the brilliant grenade launcher. Secondly, there are these droid satellites that surround you and offer either attacking support through additional gunfire, defensive support through being able to take two extra hits or a speed boost. Sometimes the crates will flash with the icon of each power-up, giving you the opportunity to break it at the right time and receive the one that you want. And I like this aspect as it allows you to be aggressive and go for the additional firepower, or play it a little safer and take the additional hits that the defensive power-up grants. In terms of how the game is laid out, levels 1 to 4 can be tackled in any order, with the fifth and final level available once all of these have been completed. As mentioned earlier, there are a few difficulty levels to choose from. You have easy and normal from the off with a hard mode that can be unlocked if you complete the game on normal. The major difference between the modes are the number of lives granted, some enemies being removed when playing in easy mode, as well as a weapon crate being presented to the player just after they've lost a life in this mode. Blazing Chrome clearly takes inspiration from older run and guns, with the major influences seemingly being the Contra series and the Metal Slug series. It has the slick and fast pace of the Contra games, with constant swarms of enemies jumping onto the screen, attempting to overwhelm you and needing you to keep half an eye on every part of the screen at all times. This is the game at its best, with you popping shots left and right and avoiding enemy fire. Unfortunately at times some of the enemies become a little bit bullet spongy and this can lead to too many enemies coming onto the screen at once as you can't clear them as quickly as they appear. With one hit kills, times like these can wipe out your life stock in literal seconds. The inconsistent placement of checkpoints can be another cause of frustration. Checkpoints occur whenever you reach the end of a screen within a level. Dying after this point will take you back to the beginning of that screen rather than back to the start of the level. And each level is made up of around three of these screens. The first couple are quite manageable, whereas the final screen will usually see you having to run a gauntlet of relentless enemies and beat a boss. Oh, and the boss has multiple forms as well. You do get better on this final stretch, no doubt making it to the boss stage with more lives and a weapon upgrade as you try again, but the inconsistency in the checkpoint placement is a little frustrating. The Metal Slug influence comes from vehicle sections. Every so often you will come across a vehicle or a mech suit that you can enter, using it to mow down the enemies until its life bar is depleted. At this point you will be alerted that you need to eject from the vehicle before it explodes. There are also some story driven vehicle sections such as this pursuit of your enemy via a hoverbike. One of the most important features for a run and gun game is included being that of two player co-op. It's not drop in and out though and you need to specifically choose two players when starting the game up. The co-op play is great fun and certainly adds to the experience. The controls are extremely simple and easy to use. Movement is handled by the D-pad whereas B makes your chosen character jump and Y fires their weapon. Holding down the R button will lock your character into place allowing you to shoot while standing still and you can fire in 8 directions. You can also duck with a press of down on the D-pad and down and B together will perform an evasive roll across the screen. Movement is very fluid, especially with the Joy-Cons. The D-pad on the Pro Controller is not as effective, although this is certainly not the game's fault, of course. Finally, there is a melee move, which is performed by tapping the Y button, 
when in close proximity to an enemy. This is very powerful and can kill most enemy types in one hit, but of course you need to make sure that you time it right, as if you do mistime it, you will end up with a face full of enemy. Gameplay is fast paced, intense and fun, with the occasional difficulty spike an unfortunate addition, but on the whole receives 15 out of 20 whilst the controls are exactly what they need to be and they receive 17 out of 20. Blazing Chrome looks to emulate action games of the 80s and 90s with a pixelated art style which displays an alternative future. The bleak depiction of an urban dystopia with its burnt out vehicles and dilapidated buildings set amid a foreground of ash and rubble is in stark contrast to the highly saturated red skies. Whilst this setting is certainly nothing new, with countless games over the years using it of course, the strong use of colour offset against the grey hues of the foreground is very effective. The setting could quite easily be showing John Connor's battle against Skynet or Snake Plissken's escape from New York. The two main characters show a decent level of detail, down to idle animations, and I like the fact that there is a choice between a human and a robot. I'd like to think that this is perhaps a nod to the fact that Contra was known as Probotector in certain regions, with the human characters being replaced with robots. Well here you have both. Enemy sprites show some variety with an assortment of robotic soldiers on display, and the bosses are fairly imaginative without ever really wowing you. Within the options screen you can change the screen filter to emulate a CRT TV, which is something that quite a few games are doing these days, but again it's a nice feature. The soundtrack is quite generic, but at the same time is exactly what it needs to be and what you would expect it to be based on the subject matter. It matches the fast paced action very well and does a solid if unspectacular job of complementing the gameplay. Digitised speech is used sparingly throughout the game and again is done in such a way that pays homage to arcade games of the 80s and 90s. Visuals emulate some of the classics of the genre well, with a clever use of colour making it stand out and receive 15 out of 20 whereas the audio is appropriate if unremarkable and also receives 15 out of 20. Blazing Chrome costs £15.29 or $16.99 and for this price you get an adventure that lasts for 5 levels. This is quite a high price point for what is a short game, however there are online leaderboards should this encourage you to replay the game multiple times, although these were not live as of the time of this review. The main problem that the game has is the level of competition on the eShop. For a very similar price you can buy the Contra Anniversary Collection and the Metal Slug games are available for around £6. If you've played these games to death though and are looking for something new, yet reassuringly familiar at the same time, this game is certainly a good option. Throw in the two player co-op mode and there's value to be had here, although I do still think the price point is a little bit too high and value receives 12 out of 20. To conclude, if you like run and gun games then Blazing Chrome is well worth considering. Apart from a couple of minor gameplay niggles, the major stumbling block would be the price when you consider that there are some very big names in the run and gun genre already available on the Switch for less. Of course these are all old games so if you have played these numerous times already or just want something new to sink your teeth into, plus you are happy that you would get some replayability out of what is a short game otherwise, then you could certainly do a lot worse. Blazing Chrome gets a switch up score of 74%. Many thanks everybody as always for watching, please do remember to leave a like if you like what you've just seen and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already for all things Switch all the time. We're not too far off 40,000 subscribers now which is an absolutely wonderful achievement, well will be when we get there anyway. And again just a big thank you to everyone that's helped us along the way. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.